guys, I'm Jess Sammers with Board Game Geek TV, and I am here with Travis Worthington. Hello. And Kevin Lansing, who is the designer of this game. So, why don't we go ahead and start off with, you know, how it's done. So, uh, Flashpoint Fire Rescue is a game we're talking about here today. It's a firefighting game. Um, so, the board is the building that's on fire, um, and each of us that are playing are firefighters. Um, so the basic idea of the game is you've got victims in the house. They're um, question marks? Question marks, and some of them, when you turn them over, are actually false alarms. So you get there, and no and one's actually one there. That false alarm? Oh. And that one's a victim. Oh, so no. the goal of the game is to save seven victims to get them out of the house. Okay. The game comes with family rules and advanced rules. So we'll go through the family rules first, okay. and then talk about some of the concepts in the advanced game as okay. well. And then real quick, I just want to flash the box, flashing it. Let's see, was the, here we go. Pretty sweet firefighter rushing into a fire, saving people. So, all right, go for it. So each of us is a firefighter on our turn. In the basic game, we have four action points. Um, we can do pretty typical things that you'd expect of a firefighter. We can move, um, we can extinguish the fire, turn it to smoke, we can take it off the board. Um, we can actually go to a wall, we can chop the wall and open up the wall. You have to actually chop two times to go through the wall. Okay. When we reach a question mark, a point of interest, we flip it over, ah, it's a victim. We Earth need to bring that victim outside. So we can carry that victim. Wow, look at that hoverboard. And bring her <laughs> to the exterior uh, door. All right. Um, that, we can also open and close the doors, and I think that pretty much covers, in the basic game, the actions that you can do. Okay. After every turn, we roll the dice to advance the fire. The fire spreads in the building. So we roll the dice, ah, 4-4. Four, four. Maybe not such a good example. Let's say we got 6-4. We would add another smoke to that space. So each space, uh -oh is a grid coordinate with the grid numbers on there. Okay. Because there was nothing there, we add a smoke. Okay. If we were to roll the same the next time, we would actually flip that smoke into a fire. Grand, well, not grand piano. Piano's on fire. <laughs> if we were to roll that same space again, or another space that had a fire in it, it would cause an explosion. That explosion... What? would propagate the fire throughout the, uh, the cardinal direction. So wow. in this case, the fire would spread in each of the four directions. As it spreads north from my direction, it would hit this wall and damage the wall. Um, one damage marker on a wall means the wall is damaged. Two damage markers on a wall means that wall is destroyed and it's treated as if it weren't there. So you can actually go through that wall, you can move through the wall, the fire can spread through that wall. Um, likewise, if there was an explosion here, it would spread in this direction, so we'd add another fire over here, and it would blow out this door. So the, the advancing the fire is you know, how the fire gets out of control, and it's our job to both rescue the victims and keep the fire under control. And the last part of your turn is uh, it, check to make sure that there's three of these blue markers on the board, you save a victim in the family game by bringing them outside. If we saved them, they would come over here to the safe spot. And now there's only two markers on the board, so we would roll and place another one. I like to roll 6-4. <laughs> so we'd place it right here. In the family game, we would actually take the fire out. In the advanced game, we would follow the little arrows on the board until we found an empty spot. And then we would place the, the marker there. So that gives you a, a random distribution of both the fire, the fire spread, and where the victims are in the house. So every game is, is going to play out differently, even if you start from this uh, family game of preset beginning. Okay. So that's the basic idea of the family game. Um, and really what we put the family game in there was, so you could play with your kids. I have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old son. Um, you know, the five-year-old kind of gets the concept. He can play along. It's a fully cooperative game, so we can help him. And he just, he likes to save the victims. He never wants to fight the fire. He only wants to save the victims. So he can play along with us um, and, um, you know, 
he's not really playing the game the way it should be, but it's a fun game, and that's why the family rules are in here. Um, my eight-year-old son and most gamers will probably want to start with the advanced game. Um, so what we introduced in the advanced game was eight roles. Uh, each of the roles has a special ability, has a different amount of action points. Um, the fire, this, the Cavs firefighter is better at putting out fires, for example. Uh, the fire captain can move other players. So there's eight different roles. Um, that do different things to help you win the game. Um, also in the advanced game, there's an ambulance and a fire truck. In the advanced game, you actually have to bring the victims, ah, another false alarm, oh. out to the ambulance in order to save them. Okay. Can't just bring them outside. Okay. The fire truck can shoot the water cannon and put out a lot of fire at the same time. It can only target a quarter of the board and then we roll the dice to see where it is so in this case the water cannon would hit this space right here and would put out in the four cardinal directions okay. which would result in no fire being put yeah. out here the, yeah. the person operating the fire engine wasn't so competent no, they're not. Um, Oh, one other thing I should have mentioned for both the family and the advanced game is you can actually save your actions from turn to turn. So some other cooperative games that have action point systems, you have to spend all your actions on the turn okay. or you lose them. Right. Here, there's action point markers, so I've saved two action points and I can use those in a subsequent turn. Nice. Um, also in the advanced game is what we call hot spots. And these allow the fire to spread uh, more quickly. It makes it the advanced game more difficult. So if we were to actually advance the fire and land uh, on this spot, not only would we have an explosion, but we would also, because there's a hot spot, we would roll again and put another smoke or fire into another uh, area. So that, and do you have a, a, let's say we rolled here, we'd put a smoke in that marker, we'd actually add another hot spot. Yeah. So the advanced rules, the fire spreads more quickly yes. as the game progresses. Much more complicated. Um, you win the game by saving seven people. You lose if seven people die. So, so a person dies. Seven to uh, seven when to four, win. seven yeah. to win, four to lose. Four to lose. Sorry. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, Thanks for catching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a family game. We don't want that many people to die. Yeah. Um, so that's true in both the advanced and the family version. Both versions. It's seven saved uh, to win. Four. If four uh, die, you lose the game. The other way you can lose the game is if you place all 24 damage counters on the board. Oh, because then the, the, it would just collapse and kill Absolutely. everyone in it anyway. So the building collapses and everyone dies. Um, and we also forgot to explain hazardous materials. Oh, great. <laughs> so in the, in the house are flammable liquids. I don't know what they're doing there, but what, yeah, what? as the fire advances. Oh, I left my gasoline tank in my house again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin has some devious ideas. <laughs> um, they're hiding, or well. So if the fire advances on the uh, hazardous material, it causes an explosion in that square. Okay. And it also adds oh, my a hot spot. So hazardous Get out materials. Of really quickly. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the fun part of the game because there's uh, some random elements. You never know what's going to happen. So. When you're playing with hot spots, especially if you're playing at the highest level, which we call a heroic level, there can be up to 16 hot spots on the board. Wow. Actually, more than that. Yeah, I think 22. I can't remember though. This is seeming pretty grim. Yeah, and in the fire, you can be one turn away from winning the game and have everything go bad on you. So, you know, when you're rolling the dice, you're like, oh no, what am I gonna roll? So I think it's a, it's a great game to play. I enjoy it with my family. I enjoy playing it with, uh, at the higher levels with you know, people that like to play games, the gamers. 
Um, so I think it's got a, a, a wide audience. Uh, we've, we've sold out all the copies we brought here at Essen. Uh, it took us about 24 hours because they didn't show up until three o'clock on Thursday. Yeah. We had a little customs issue. Um, like and that. we sold out before three o'clock uh, today. So, very cool. Yep, we're we're really excited about it. Awesome, good job. Do you have any comments about how you uh, how you came up with the the game? How's his mic, Link? All right. Well. Um, good. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pandemic was uh, obviously an early inspiration. This this game has certain commonalities. Um, but I did, I did want to break with um, that in, in a couple of ways. I, I felt that while the, the gameplay was very excellent, it was a bit um, too top-down, a little, a little bit sterile. I didn't really feel for these, these millions of, of, of suffering people dying from disease. They, were, they didn't mean anything to me. Um, I, I found that um, taking this, the scale and putting it down to a single household made it uh, more personal. And more interesting. You're not just, uh, you know, you're not just saving millions of people. You're saving grandma and the dog. Yeah. All right. Well, very cool. It, 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 this looks like it was actually modeled in a 3D, was it? Yeah. So this was actually done. Um, the board. We can't flip it over because everything will fall off. There's two buildings. So if you flip the board over, there's a second building. I want to see the second building. Can Let's, we check that out? Absolutely. Yeah, we can. Let's do it. Even though we're we're still knocking everything off. So Aha. there's a second building on th this side. This building's actually a little harder because there's only two exterior doors. This whereas the other side. Fire code. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. goodness. All right. So this uh, both sides were actually done by a trained architect, um, modeled in 3D, um, and then rendered to to give it a, a look. One of the early versions that we did when we decided to to publish this game. Um, didn't have all the furniture in it, and we found that people weren't really connecting as much to the room. They weren't right. telling the story of, oh, I'm going to the bedroom, I'm going to the kitchen. Right, right. So doing the full graphics really works, and it, it's still, the fire, it, it, it jumps out. So right, right. even though the board is a little busy, it doesn't interfere with the gameplay. Yeah, so, definitely. and even the grids, we put that on there. Most people will figure out grids, but we found that, you know, especially when you're playing with your family, yeah. it's not always easy. Right. And my five-year-old, I, I got really tired of him counting one, two, <laughs> three, four, five. So we put e the numbers in each grid just so it's really easy when you roll to, to find out where, you, where you're doing something with the, the, the game. All right. Very cool. Good job. Very awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much Appreciate for coming it. on with us and telling us about the game. Yep. And thanks to everyone that supported it on Kickstarter. Your copies will be to your house probably like three weeks, I think, in the U.S. Are they gonna get, they're not going to get stuck in customs again, right? No, no. They're coming fingers to the crossed. U.S. Oh, okay. They're well, fingers crossed. A little, little simpler, I hope. I All hope. right. Well, <laughs> awesome. Thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right.